my first question is that sir you have held key position at education institute throughout your professional yeah. uh what are the key factors that keep you connected with the education sector for me education uh, is the very element of life it is a god given gift that many of us are involved with education though many of us are professionals as doctors education has given us great pleasure either as a teacher or an administrator or involvement in education by itself when a student comes and tells you that you have made me what i am today or you have built up an institution of repute it will always be remembered and that is the inner pleasure an education will always have so that is the key factor in education an educationalist should love education not for the monetary benefits of it but for the input and the output of education to derive pleasure for himself or herself yeah. definitely yeah. definitely sir totally agree with your point sir so moving on to next question sir so being the pro chancellor of nitte university uh, what is your philosophy of leadership how would you describe your leadership style see leadership gurus there are uh, multitudes of books on leadership for me leadership is to be shown it cannot be defined so when we unfortunately in our country or in majority of the countries when you talk of leadership we think of political leaders especially in our country political leaders with red caps white caps and black caps and different types of caps and uh, they are they are even the media people or anyone adores a political leader rather than a leader a leader in different fields to leadership to me is you and me leadership to me is if i am a leader in my own profession as an orthopedic surgeon or as a chance pro chancellor of a university or you as a marketing chief you must show leadership in our own field of endeavor that is leadership that is what is lacking especially in our country that is my concept of leadership if there is time i'll just give a small story which will which will perhaps if the students are going to hear a teacher came to his class and one day and told the students uh, look here students today is your examination day all that you have to do is write for 15 minutes an essay on what is courage <clears throat> each student started writing what is courage one student started that climbing himalayas is courage facing a tiger in the forest is courage or getting into a river to save it save a friend is courage but there was a small little boy in the corner who would not write anything at all the teacher was principal was aghast this boy knows this is examination still he doesn't write it so he he kept quiet then again reminded it is examination this why would but at the end of 14 minutes he just scribbled three three words and just gave the paper to the exam uh, to the teacher the teacher was inquisitive so the first thing he went to his office was to correct that paper because he knew that boy was an intelligent boy why he did this he didn't understand but all that he wrote was this is courage this is courage this boy demonstrated to the teacher what was courage that is the demonstration that is what we should do in our life leadership is like that it has to be shown it cannot be defined so that is leadership definitely sir so uh, sir moving on to uh, next question sir so yeah. being the pro chancellor of nitte university how do you strategize about the key programs and plans for the marketing and administration of your university that just to give a small history of our own university otherwise it won't have its uh, effect nitte university the, uh, the nitte education trust was uh, formed by late justice k sekte was the speaker of the lok sabha and also the uh, justice of the supreme court of india and after retirement he came and settled down in a small village called nitte nitte is the name of his village 
and uh, seeing there are there are no schools and uh, no village this was way back in 1970s and he started a small school primary school and a health center in his village which has today in 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 just about uh, 45 years has bloomed to be one of the foremost educational hubs of our country we have 32 institutions with nearly 25000 students with nearly about 4000 staff members and uh, we have a medical college two engineering colleges and uh, three three hubs one in bangalore and and uh, one in it and one in mangalore we have pharmacy called we have all almost all colleges you name them we have and they are running running quite well and this is the this is the you your question as uh, you asked about the administration and marketing aspect of it, isn't it yeah perfect marketing is a very important aspect of any any life whether it is education or anything. there is a famous saying that if you love your wife you would, all of us do but you must keep reminding her that you do love her. it is not it is not just that that, that, is, that is the philosophy of life so marketing is like that you will have to let know people that we are we are such a force and people should be able to utilize these facilities for their own betterment that is marketing that is that is what we do but marketing should not give false false uh, uh, images should not give false hopes to the people marketing should be the truth of it and as far as the administration is concerned i always feel administration should be should be very very, very pro staff members pro the uh, pro the uh, whole whole set of people we must live as a family in an institution and uh, they, they, it is not by rules alone but how the rules can be molded for developing the university is a very important part of in, of any administration that is the administration and coupling of ad- administration with marketing with all all other aspects is a true development of any institution Definitely, sir. Yeah. Uh, you wanted to say something, sir? No, that's fine. You go ahead. You go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, so moving on to next question, sir. So, as yeah. you know, the education system in India and other foreign countries are structured in very different way. So, yeah. in your experience, what can an inbound student gain from studying here in your university, sir? Yeah. So, you brought out brought out a very important point. Uh, unfortunately. Uh, we followed the british system or fortunately in the beginning but what happened was the britishers the, the changed that system in a year or two or three or five years after after they left left india but we stuck on to the old british the system so that that was our misfortune it was like the rigid belts of a british soldier that we were so rigid that we did not change the curriculum to tell you the fact when i was when i was in the 7th standard i studied about robert clive as a hero because he won the bondiwash 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 war for the for the britishers but he was a hooligan but to our students till after nearly about 10 years after independence still that education was going on like that that is not edu- education has to change the curriculum has to change now the whole the, area, the the globe has become a village luckily luckily so unlike unlike our days 50 40 45 years ago so what is in mcmaster's university what is what is what is in stanford university or what is in cambridge or oxford we know more hand you just click by the hand that what what is the curriculum what is going on what is there so that that has the, it, it should be it should be brought in suiting to our situation just because oxford does well in a particular way we cannot imbibe it. what suits our population you must understand we are 1.3 billion people with different ways of life and what education and what vocation will give betterment to our country has to be brought in what is important to make our country prosperous and elegant by our education system that has to be molded and changed that should be the philosophy of education it is not just borrowing just a foreign foreign education there may be good because it suits that country what suits our country it has to be tailored to that situation to make education as a better tool for bringing up the people of our country okay agreed sir 
so uh, so moving on to a uh, next question sir how does the curriculum of nitte university ensures the best practice of industry the curriculum is a very important part of education it has to change see what i taught orthopedics just 10 years ago is not even good enough for the textbooks or or for practice because it is it has changed so fast what i learned 50 years ago is not even good for historians to write in the history book so what is important is to go on changing the curriculum has to change unfortunately the medical council of india or the aict take it, you take it for the example or any any bodies which govern these particular educational systems did not mold itself to the changes which has taken place they stuck on to the rules the inspector bodies and every everything they did not allow any curriculum to be changed to the to suit the changes which is which is the vision of the university or what the students want or the what what innovative ideas the teachers have that was that was our policy we should the curriculum should be changed depending on what is required for the country now we have a covid covid uh, pandemic so we were not prepared at all because the virology as as a subject did not develop that much and we were we were at bay we depended on everything we had, every day there is a new new theory whether it is whether whether it is a, whether, what type of virus whether it is double mold whether it is it is not the, we will have to change depending and we will have to be ready for the new situations of life so that's why the curriculum whatever subject it is it may be history it may be economics it may be medicine it may be dental it has to change depending on the situation of of the present system present age perfectly sir so uh, sir moving on to our next question sir so yeah. any insights into how your university could be more welcoming to the students of different races or economic backgrounds see any university we we should uh, the, it is our vision it depends on number one the atmosphere in the university <laughs> atmosphere should be a teaching atmosphere a loving atmosphere family atmosphere and learning atmosphere it should be it should be it, it should have enough of playgrounds it should have enough of infrastructure facilities including the classrooms and whatever facilities for teaching more than all it should have the best of the staff members i firmly believe that any institution does not just depend on the infrastructure or the facilities you may have the best of the gyms we have the best of the gyms we are the best of the playgrounds but if there are no good teachers to teach the students and give the idea that university will pay so what is important is to have the best of the teachers the faculty in a university makes a difference that is the atmosphere we should develop in every university he should be a mentor a teacher should be a mentor and the students should look forward to the teachers rather th- rather than just reading in the books what we learn from a teacher is much more important than anything else perfect sir so uh, sir uh, moving on to next question sir so what yeah. do you think your roles and responsibilities to the universities and the students are uh repeat it again what should what should be the role of the university for it uh, yeah yes, yeah sir. yeah the role of the university man yeah that's what see the it should change that's what i was emphasizing right from from the beginning my generation of people where 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 what what the few research said we we were at the, at the independent era or just below the independent era we were all traditionalists then came the baby boomers they they, they made the difference in the whole world they have the best of the scientists best of the things post world war era for about 20 30 years they almost the best of the scientists came out in that particular era who were born between 1945 and 1960 then came the xyz and the millennials and you all belong to the xyz or the millennial group of people who are not not so powerful as as the baby boomers said but they wanted the best of the thing they lived their, they lived their life and they they enjoyed their life also not the not the 24 hours workers like uh, baby boomers but what is important is to change the system 
the biggest problem in our universities they refuse to change what 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 is what is happening so the development has to take place according to the change we develop just because oxford university is number number 1 or 2 or 3 or uh, in the university because of the research research has to be inculcated right from the beginning at the stages of the university it can't you just can't force a person to do it he has to have a research mind he has to have a teacher's mind he has to have an administrator's mind so what is best in particular students or teachers has to be has to be taken into consideration and the administration has to find out what is good for the university and see that the rules are followed accordingly definitely sir so yeah. uh, sir, moving on to next question sir uh, yeah. what do you think should be the university's top priority over the next 10 years the top priority is you know, the, the, in, the, in our university as such that as i told you the teaching is the very important aspect of it but unfortunately where in india we fail is in research hmm. india did not make a mark in research at all even if you go to the pubmed if you go to any research publications hardly 1 to 2% of the publications in the reputed journals today are by indian scientists whatever field you take it may be medicine veterinary agriculture any anything that is the tragedy so this is this should be the fire to, to make a name in the internationally and it was true that the our generation it was very difficult with the, to we we will have to the salary which which one one took it was it was not enough to survive but now we are changing and this change has going to we will have to divide ourselves into administrators into good teachers into good researchers and divide ourselves and research mindedness for the next 10 years we will have to develop in each university that's why the kasturi rangan uh, the uh, the new education policy which has been brought in mm. by krishna swami kasturi rangan dr krishna swami kasturi rangan is very 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 well uh, adopted it had very uh, they documented and if they follow it fully i think we will be will be a good country with good universities but unfortunately we do not implement the rules are there everything is brought in it may be passed in the parliament tomorrow hmm. the kasturi rangan uh, document but the implementation will take time there is an opposition there is this thing that said it goes on time if anything good should be implemented and otherwise the day it will lose that in the five years we lose the time the it becomes so so implementation is an important part and every university should be given the right to implement what they want to implement whether it is the curriculum whether it is any rules the changing which the changing which is taking place in the world has to be brought in definitely sir so uh, so moving on to next question sir So yeah. when you first came to the Nitte University, what was your vision yeah. for the university, and has it ever evolved over the time? And how far yeah. along in implementing that vision are you? Uh, when I went through the university, I didn't tell you that uh, our university is just 11 years old. I was the first vice chancellor of the university. Okay. I was the our medical school is 21 year old, and I was the first dean of the medical school. And uh, we had a vision. everyone has a dream and a vision i always think vision like dream unfortunately dreams we, we dream and next day morning when you get up we see oh it was after all the dream we forget about it. vision is it like that every one of us have a vision but to implement many 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 people like what abdul kalam said should not sleep unless the dreams are realized it's day dreamers the vision should be like day dreamers they should have a vision and what is their vision and implement it whatever it is the vision for betterment of the university betterment of the students on par betterment of the teachers and finally what counts is the nation in what way the nation can come up with your implementation of these rules and whether the student can be helped whether the teachers can be helped for the betterment of the nation as a whole and for betterment of themselves to tell you the fact in just 11 years time i am not boasting myself but uh, our university the, is ranked ranked today as 74th out of these 542 universities in our country 
and our medical school out of 500 in uh, i mean 952 medical colleges in the country we are 34 which is which itself is a is a great thing and our dental college is number 5 out of out of the 300 dental colleges and so is the pharmacy college out of the 2000 pharmacy colleges is 49 we are ranked very well ranking is ranking is just a criteria but the pressure you derive that you are you are forging ahead you are mastering it when when you when you march ahead you, that means your visions whatever you are envisaging whatever you are trying to implement as i told you your vision should be for the betterment of the students the staff and the country as a whole that should be your vision in whatever way you can but implement it that is important definitely sir so sir moving on to next question sir uh, what would you like uh, people to know about your university they may not know you know the greatest uh, strength of our university is administration <clears throat> administration by the fact it is our chancellor mr vinayak day after the death of his father he took it over uh, nearly about uh, nearly 30 years ago and uh, he is a person who, who has a great vision you may not believe we meet we have a core committee core committee is the decision committee they are comprising of just seven members of the pro chancellor the vice chancellor the chancellor and and uh, and the and the, the finance director and the registrar of the institute we meet every week every week and policy is collectively taken okay. it is not the chancellor is sitting in a chair and direct but all of us are a part of it that means there is a belonging that we will have and the next week we look into whether what we decided what we discussed has come to effect or not in the next week or is within a month and see that it is put in or if we have failed anyway we discuss why we failed there are problems in running a university the student problems from drugs from various other problems everything is discussed so that the the greatest strength is the administration which is which is you know what is very important uh, manish is to bring about belonging i should feel that i belong to this university the 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 class 4 servant who is just an ayah or my own attender or a driver should have a feeling that i belong to this institute from top to the bottom if they have a feeling of belonging that it is my university and my institution that automatically it goes but if there is if there is a difference of opinion if there is galata if there is there is then that the growth automatically returns so uh, so yeah. moving on to next question sir uh, yeah. what do you see as nitis uh, nitte university uh, greatest strength sir as i told you the the, the greatest strength that uh, has been has been the, the our attrition rate is almost negligible that is that is our strength that means who join our university whether it is the professor or, or the principal hmm. or even the class 4 serpent they do not leave it unless there is a different that is the greatest thing so that means they have a belonging that is that is so with that we have developed our university into a very friendly friendly atmosphere if you uh, i will like to invite you when you come to mangalore we have the best of the gyms we have the best of the playground the the all india team of basket basketball basketball team came and practiced for three weeks in our university before they went went to korea for the for the international match so that is the standard standard of playgrounds which we have what to what over it gives and more than all it is very student friendly it is uh, very very friendly to the staff members with the atmosphere that it, and we have the best of the hostels hostels are a very very important part of the students life and the hostels are very well made up with a good atmosphere that is it all pounded each each single point is taken into consideration so that there are no lacunes in the development of a university perfect so uh, so moving on to next question sir yeah. so what are some of the biggest challenges you see both for higher education in general and for nitty university specifically yeah. 
See, the greatest challenges in our universe, in, in our educational system, is uh, the curriculum which, is, uh, which has to be. The university should be given a free hand to change the curriculum. The, and and the, which, which is student friendly and, and depending on the changes which is taking place in there. Gone are the days we were, we were, we were the television era. Then the, from the television era, era we came to we came to telephone era. From the telephone era, we came to came to the computer era. From there, we came to the digital era. Now we now we are going into robotics. Uh, we are going into stem cell therapy. We are going to gene therapy. We are going to going to artificial intelligence. So we will have to. These are the challenges. We can't be an armchair person, an administrator or a teacher, or has no place in the present era. He has to run with time. And that is the changes, that is the biggest challenge. How fast you can run. That is the student. Now the students are very intelligent. By the click of the hand, they will know what university is good and what is what is bad and what is that. And more than all, I feel more than you are a marketing person, I did not tell you that. It is true, marketing has to be has to be done. But the biggest market I find is the students and the teachers with whom you are working. If a student goes and tells another student, well, you go and study there, that is my alma mater, and that is the best university, that's the biggest advertisement. So that is what we feel we should we should work together. But that, that is a big challenge. To satisfy a student is the most important factor in an university. When he goes out, he should go go with the complete the satisfaction that this university has given me what I wanted to be a good citizen of tomorrow, a humanitarian and a loving person of tomorrow, to be a good citizen of tomorrow more than anything else. Uh, and the final thing is the corruption and uh, the corruption of in, in our country, which which I always say, the, that the students and all of us should put it, if corruption can come down in our country, automatically our country will prosper. But whatever level, that is, that is the main thing. Yeah, so, uh, sir, moving on to next question, sir. Any suggestions you would like to give to the current youth and the aspiring students? Yeah, youth, as, a, as, a, as you know, the, the greatest strength, which even our Prime Minister did, uh, does mention in, in, in many of his speeches, but it is true that the greatest strength of our country today is our youth. Yeah. One third of our population. A little less than one third of the population, and nearly about 30 to 40 crores of people are between 15 to 34 years old. This is our greatest trend. Unless the youth are motivated, motivation are three types. One is fear motivation that if you if you do not study well, you will fail in the examination. There is fear motivation; it goes on once the fear goes on. The second is the award motivation. That if you if you study well, you will get a first class. If you do not study well, you will pay. Or if you I will give a medal if you get a first class. Or if it, that is that is award motivation. That goes off once you get the award, you forget. What has to what is important for you to have that motivation that I want to be an achiever. That I want to I want to do something. Having born in this world, I want to do something to this world to give back to the society what society has given me. That should be the youth. The youth should understand that they have, they have uh, the motiv motivation to develop this country. The national love should be inculcated in each one of our institutions. And the youth should take it. That I am a proud Indian. India, remember, just about 700 years ago was the richest country in the world. Richest country in the world, China was, China was next to us. But due to invasions, due to so many, so many causes, we went down without, 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 without any. Today we are 124 in the world economy. So this has to change. This can be changed only by the youth, youth of this country. That they determine that we will do it. And if they, they can do it. If they determine that they will do it. That is my message to the youth of this country. Uh, yeah. So, moving on to last question of this interview, sir. So, yeah. how do you tend to establish a healthy relation and environment in your university, sir? 
healthy relationship is like a family give and take you can't be taking all the time unfortunately in our country education has become a money making enterprise which should not if money comes in if greed comes in everything is gone so it should be a give and take you 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 give the best of the facilities for the students what money you have taken as a tuition fees should be spent for the betterment of the student and keep your teachers happy they are the main source of strength of your of your education system if a teacher feels that my work is from 9 to 5 that doesn't work like that a teacher should be a motivator should be an innovator should be a researcher should be a mentor that cannot be done from 9 to 4 or 9 to 5 jobs that when the bell rings he runs out like the students he should be a part of the whole system for the development of the system that has to be done in every one of our university that comes by giving and taking it is if it is one way after all teachers are like are every one of us like human beings that they also have a family to look after they also have have their own aspiration and give them the best of the things and give them the best of the best of the salaries and give them what they want if they want to go abroad for any 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 innovative ideas to be brought in or any fellowships or scholarships to be given to the student all that should be inculcated in the university so that as i told you that in your eighth question belonging is a very important part of the development of a university Uh, thank you so much sir for giving the interview it is going to motivate lot of students in general also and those who are looking to get admission in the nitte university sir